So Johnny is behind the camera at the moment has always called me and Sam big massive nerds because we love all of this old stuff and I think though finally since we've done the uh, diverticles with the uh, cassette tapes in him he's come around to our way of thinking and he actually asked me today so how does this stuff all work then? <laughs> so I thought you know today's a good time to do an overview of this thing to give you an idea of how calls actually get from here routed through all the exchange and stuff to the other person that you want to speak to. So this big massive behemoth that we have in the uh, museum, this specifically is a UAX 13 type exchange, a unit automatic exchange, the X is exchange. And uh, I'm gonna talk you through specifically the routing of the calls through this type of exchange, but it does differ for different types and we'll go through some caveats as we do it. Also in the museum, we have a, a UAX 12, exchange which uses the older pre-2000 type selector switches. We also have a couple of uh, private automatic exchanges and these would have been used in like an office building for example for internal calls but they all share similarities in the way they work because they are step-by-step exchanges. There's loads of phones all the way around the museum and they can all call each other which is a really cool thing and from each phone there are two wires that go all the way to the telephone exchange. In the real world, they'd go over like poles overhead and underground as well. Um, but here you can see them actually routed through the cable trays going through to the exchange room. That's one of the junction boxes that where all the actual telephones plug into, but then they're taken down a big multi-core cable to the actual exchange. And you can see a load of these wires coming in down here into the C rack of our UAX 13. This has the main distribution frame and the intermediate distribution frame. We're not gonna worry too much about what all those mean. From here, this is routed down towards the banks of the line finders. And you'll find those on the A racks. We have three A racks. They're all connected to each other, but for this video, we're just gonna focus on one of the racks. This, what you're looking at here, is a line finder. It's a two motion selector, and we talked about two motion selectors before. They're called two motion selectors because they move in two motions. They go up vertically and they rotate around. There are different types of two motion selector and the line finder that we're looking at functions a bit different from some of the other two motion selectors that we're going to be looking at later. So this fella's job is to find your telephone line. That's why it's called a line finder. When you pick up the telephone, watch this. There you go. It's just found our telephone. Let me explain how it does that. All right, so this is the circuit diagram for all of the uh, associated line finder. Uh, circuitry. So that's all of this stuff down here. Um, yeah, quite a lot going on. So I'm not going to go in depth into exactly what's happening, but I'll give you the broad strokes. So from each telephone going to the exchange, there are a pair of wires and that forms an electrical loop. And when you pull the handset off of the cradle, there's actually a switch here. And what that switch does when you pull up the phone is connect those two wires so there is an electrical circuit going between them and that current that flows through that circuit is what tells the exchange that somebody has picked up their phone and the line finder needs to find that phone so first of all you've got these associated line relays down here you see them moving as i pick up and put down the phone handset so without getting completely in the weeds those uh, line relays cause the control box to send out a start signal which causes the line finder to go off searching for your telephone line. So you remember that pair of wires that come from your telephone line that form the audio loop that you're gonna talk over? Well, they come directly into this bank here that is sat behind the line finders. And you can see there's two sets of 10 levels and on the top and the bottom of each level is an actual electrical contact. And that is the points where your plus and minus A and B pair come into. And here's a diagram of the numbering of the two motion selector bank contacts. It's just like coordinates. You've got 10 levels going up and 10 uh, contacts going across. So that's 100 possible positions. And note that the zero level is at the top and the zero contact is at the end of the rotary travel. So each one of these pads is a different telephone in the town, in the village. At this stage, within the exchange itself, you also get added a private wire and a meter wire. And stick with me here, this is the mind-melting bit. Every line has its own private 
wire and that is connected just like the plus minus and meter onto a contact within this bank right and when you pick up your phone a battery voltage gets placed onto that p wire as well as the correct level on this vertical marking bank that i'm pointing at and that battery voltage is what the wipers those pincery things are looking for so they'll search up the vertical marking bank find that battery voltage and then search across around the banks and all four contacts are connected in your audio loop your p wire and your meter wire all right so you're gonna have to pay attention because it happens super quick there you go so it's stepped up three levels and gone onto the first pad three up one across that quick so each one of these line finders and there are eight on this rack has the ability to find any of the individual phones that are connected into the bank contacts here. So we've gone through if one person picks up their phone and that line finder there has found this phone. But if somebody else wants to call at the same time, we've got another line finder here that finds their phone. So this group of line finders here has the capacity to handle eight simultaneous calls. I told you it was complicated, right? And that's to do with these two uniselectors down here. What they are are allotters. Their job is to prepare these line finders ready to receive a call, okay? If I take up this one, this line finder here has found this line and the allotter has turned around. Remember, it's a uni selector, so it only goes in one direction compared to these two motion selectors that go up and across, right? That has now moved the priority onto another line finder. So if I pick up another phone, that one there was prepped, ready to go. There's two control boxes and they are shared between all of the line finders. This one uh, handles the odd numbered levels and this one handles the even numbered. But if one of them's broken, they do have the capability of one of them taking over the duties of both. And coping with broken equipment is a big part of the design of this. A lot of redundancy is built in so that if the control box doesn't work or one of these line finders doesn't work or one of them is not even jacked in like here, the allotter will not select this position. It will just skip to the next working line finder. If I take this out, there you go. You can hear the allotter switching around trying to find a working line finder okay so so far in our phone call we haven't even dialed a number all of this line finding stuff is the most complicated part and i've hardly even really got into any detail it's amazing really all mechanical and it happens super quick watch this there you go a lot just happened you see that circuit diagram from before all of them switches and stuff on there they're all working in an instant and it needs to be that fast because if this isn't ready and you start dialing, it's gonna start missing numbers. That's why you have to listen for the dial tone. It tells you that your line's connected and you can start dialing. We're gonna actually move on now to the next step in the phone call. Our line finder has now connected us to this first group selector. Each one of these line finders is directly connected to its own group selector. So in our relatively small exchange, uh, the line uh, circuits are using these two motion selectors as line finders. But in bigger exchanges, you'll often find uh, individual unit selectors for each subscriber, a dedicated switch for every single person that has a telephone. And it kind of works the opposite way to these. Instead of searching for the telephone, those subscribers' unit selectors search for a first selector instead. The reason why they use unit selectors instead of two motion selectors is because the two motion selectors are quite expensive um, compared to the unit selectors and beyond a certain point, beyond a certain number of subscribers, it actually becomes more economical, makes more sense money-wise to have subscribers unit selectors than line finders, two motion line finders. So what's actually happening when you dial on your handset is it is controlling the mechanical movement of this selector switch. So you see on the banks, there are 10 levels, right? And on your dial, you've got naught to nine. So that's 10 different options, right? And so when you dial, what it's doing is interrupting the connection between those two wires that are coming to your telephone. And that interruption, that breaking of the circuit at 
a specific frequency at a specific timing moves this A relay, which does a load of stuff, which then causes the wipers on the selector to step up these banks and select one of these levels. So because it's stepping in uh, groups of 10, this is actually a decimal system. This type of exchange, this would originally have been a three number scheme. And with just three digits, you've got numbers all the way from 000 to 999. So that's 1000 different numbers. For various reasons, you wouldn't actually have a thousand subscribers in a UAX 13 type exchange, but we won't get into all of that right now. That's another 10 minute video. So the first number that you're dialing in a thousand subscriber uh, exchange, right, is selecting the hundreds group within that thousand subscribers. We narrowed down our options to a hundred possible subscribers within that thousand. So if I dial a six, that's gonna go to the 600 group within that thousand. Steps up six levels and then it will go across. So the automatic searching across is looking for an available switch in the next stage of the dialing, all right? What we can do is uh, go across to another group selector um, if we were doing four digits, but in ours, we're just doing three digits at the moment, so we're gonna go straight to the final selectors up here. So because this is the final step, these are not gonna connect to another selector, so they are the final selector, right? So they don't need that automatic searching function across looking for the next switch. So we're actually controlling with our telephone dial the upward stepping and the rotary stepping across. And that's the last two digits of our phone number, right? So if I dial six, it's gonna narrow down our options to a tens group, if this was working, <laughs> uh, within that hundreds group, right? So you're narrowing down your options, narrowing down your options. And then we can go across the last number that you're dialing is gonna select one of those last 10 options, right? And you'll find the line that you want to call. Here you go. So you remember these switch banks that are behind the selectors here earlier in our line finders, we had all of the telephone lines from all of the individual telephones coming in onto those pads. It's exactly the same thing with these final selectors, except going the other way. So you use the same pair of wires if you are calling someone else or someone is calling you. It is the switching that goes on that makes sure that you can't call someone at the same time as you're being called and vice versa. All right, so all of that was just to tell you how I can get from here to here. And I didn't even really tell you the detail. Oh my goodness me. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed, this actually works. And we can call this green phone from the red phone. If you come here, you can do this. You can see the numbers here. And you'll actually now be able to understand and see the call being routed in real time through the exchange as you stand in front of it. So let's give this a go. On this sheet, we've got the number of the green phone as 6700. And we were talking earlier about how we've set this up so we can add in an extra group selector stage just for fun. So that means that actually, little secret here, you could ignore that first number and we can call this phone just with 700. So I pick this up, did you hear that? That was all the line finder and a lotter working, doing its thing. So if we dial a seven, you'll see the group selector stepping up. That takes us, connects us to the final selector. Then we do a zero. That's gonna step us up to the top level on that final selector. And zero again, it's gonna take us rotary around it. And there we go. We've actually called the green phone. Hello, Mr. Green Phone. So now you understand what's happening if you come to the exchange and have a go for yourself. Um, we'd love to see you here on an opening day. Check the website to find out when that is. And if you want to support us, there's a Patreon link down below. This has been Telephone Tuesdays. We'll see you next Tuesday.